Hey everyone, it's Requiem. It's time to look at the Spitfire Mark 9. Starting off with a few buttons. We've got oil dilution, supercharger ground test, and the radiator ground test, which will open the radiator completely if you use it. Above that, we've got the rudder trim. See they're moving it. Move the nose to starboard or to port. A few switches. You've got the pitot heat, camera switch, and the fuel booster. There's our elevator trim, along with the trim tab position indicator. Moving forward to look at the throttle quadrant. Got the air screw control, which is controlling our RPM. The silver handle, that's your throttle. And then hiding behind the throttle is your mixture. Pushing it forward to the full position is auto rich. Then you can lean it back from there if you need. Coming up to the top, we can see the flaps control there. Since we've got the larger side on, kind of obscuring the navigation lights, but they're just to the left of the flaps. Moving down this panel, that's your oxygen equipment. A radio with the channel selections. The clock. Your undercarriage indicator, magnetos, and your brake triple pressure gauge. As for the gun sight, I've chosen to put the gyro gun sight Mark II D in there. We'll be looking at this in more detail in another video, but for now, you can just see there that's the gun sight mode select and the gun sight master switch. Looking at the main panel, we got your airspeed indicator, artificial horizon, vertical speed indicator altimeter, directional gyro, and the slip and turn indicator. Underneath that, you've got your cockpit floodlight switches. And to the right, you've got a booster coil push button and the starter push button. Now trying to look underneath, we've got the P8 magnetic compass and the fuel cock control. And up the top here, hiding behind the sight, that's our air meter. And coming back down on the right, we've got the tachometer, supercharger warning lamp which tells you when the second gear is on, and the switch that we can switch between auto and first gear, the boost gauge, oil pressure gauge, oil temperature gauge, and the coolant temperature gauge, there's the fuel gauge, and the fuel pressure warning light. Over here we've got the signaling switch box and the engine limitations. Underneath there's your landing gear control. This box on the right is known as the pipsqueak. This sends a signal when the needle's in the red. So then the home base can detect where you are based on the signal and they can provide vectors to enemy fighters. There's your windscreen de-icing and the emergency gear extension. To prepare for takeoff on the Spitfire 9, we'll set the rudder trim to fully starboard, elevator trim 1 division below neutral, mixture control auto rich, RPM to maximum, flaps up, fuel cock on, and the supercharger auto. On the roll, we're going to keep the stick back, but as speed increases, we're going to bring the stick to neutral. This will cause us to rotate at 95 miles per hour, and then we'll climb at 180 to altitude. So now we'll bring ourselves to a stop. We'll go through the items. There's a the rudder trim bringing it all the way to starboard, to the right. Getting elevator trim set to one division below neutral. RPM is at max, mixture's auto rich, flaps are up, and our supercharger is auto. So now we can start applying power and get ourselves rolling, holding the stick fully back. 
Once we start gaining some airspeed, bring the stick to the neutral position. Using any rudder as needed to keep straight. Then 95 miles per hour, we lift off. Once we get to 100 foot above the ground, we can retract the landing gear. And we can close the canopy. Then we'll set our RPM to 2850. Then we get our initial climb at 180 miles per hour. You can climb in combat power if you want, or you can save it for combat and just climb in max bridge continuous. So we'll remain in the pattern and look ahead to land the Spitfire Mark 9. As you approach downwind, your RPM will be set to 2650 and make sure you'll be raw to rich. You let your airspeed slow below 160 miles per hour, then you can open the canopy. You also extend the landing gear, and by the end of downwind, you'll be extending the flaps to full. Based to final, you'll set the up in the maximum with an approach speed at 95 miles per hour if you are engine assisted, or 105 miles per hour if you're gliding. So now here we are in downwind. We're going to set the RPM to 2650. We know the mixture is already rich. So as we hold altitude and we slow down, we get below 160 miles per hour and we can open the canopy. So up next we extend the landing gear, it's going to create more drag and begin slowing us down a little bit more. We're going to maintain our altitude until we get to the end of downwind. As we're approaching that, we can then drop the flaps and we're going to look at how to do a gliding approach today. So we drop the flaps, we're going to cut the power to idle begin our turn towards the runway and maintain an approach speed of 105 miles per hour. So we're still trying to visualize where the aiming point is. Should be towards the beginning of the runway. And as we start getting near the final, we're going to set our RPM to maximum. We'll continue our glide towards the runway. Now in this case, because I don't have any engine power being used, I'm going to be maintaining my SP using my pitch. So still we're coming in, flying towards the roaming point, we can start leveling the plane off, bleeding any extra airspeed away, holding it up in a three point position, and we touch down. And then you can start applying bursts of brakes to come to a stop. And if you need some directional control, apply the rudder while you're applying the brakes, and they give you some differential braking. So you can continue that until a full stop, or just to taxi off the runway. That completes your tutorial for the Spitfire Mark 9. If you liked it, let me know with the like button or leave a comment. And don't forget to be a subscriber with the bell icon so you can see new videos as they're released.